All right, check out this battery. It's the EG4, 48 volt, 100 amp hour, waterproof battery. You can uh, drip water on this all day long and it won't bother it. It's made pretty much specifically for RVs and boats. So I thought it was a perfect one to get. It has uh, grade A cells. So they're brand new, never been used, and they're top quality. Um, you're supposed to be able to get uh, 15 plus years out of it with you discharging it to zero and charging it all the way back up every single day for 15 years with no noticeable um, change in it. It is lithium iron phosphate, which is way more um, safe than what I had. I'll tell you that story after I tell you about the battery. Um, but it is uh, 51.2 volts. You charge it up to 58. And then you float it at about, you know, they say you can float it at 50, 55, but I floated at 54. Um, it has a 200 amp um, BMS, so you can dump out, you know, 150 amps without having to worry about that, you know, triggering. Um, it uh, has Bluetooth. And I, uh, you can get the uh, app from their store. It's free. They got it for uh, for Android and for Apple. And uh, the Bluetooth communicates with you and lets you know what the um, voltage is. <coughs> um, it lets you know what the voltage is of each cell, which is really cool, especially when you get to the top of your charging and you can see what's really going on, you know. Um, it has protection. Um, it can go into protect mode if you overdo it either direction, you know, too much dumping out too many amps or overcharging it. So that uh, helps protect it for, for, for you. Um, let's see. It's 5,120 watt hours. That's what you should really pay attention to is watt hours because a 12 volt battery will have a much higher amp hour and that can confuse people that are new to the battery thing. Um, this has the same, you know, the size of it is the same as a 200 amp hour 12 volt. Um, and it's only 100 amp hours. But really that's just uh, kind of uh, confusing for people. Go buy watt hours and you'll know exactly what you have, whether it's a 12 volt, a 24 volt, a 48 volt. And it's gonna the watt hours are gonna give you the, the correct, you know, the correct message. Um, so far it's been doing great. I haven't had any issues. The uh, balancing is a little weird though. Um, I hope you can see this. It's pretty dark. <laughs> The balancing is pretty weird because it's kind of random. One day it'll uh, it'll pick one cell to let it go a little high, you know, when you get to the very top where it's about to cut off at 58 volts. The next day it'll randomly pick some other cell. Um, I guess that it's what it's supposed to do, but I don't know, it's a little unnerving. But, you know, obviously they got it all worked out. I mean, they guarantee 15 years of total discharge and totally charging it back up to 100%. So I'm not going to worry about that. But uh, it's uh, 20 and a half inches long and 10 and a half inches wide. And I got really lucky that my uh, 8020 from the wall over to here is right at 20 and a half inches so uh, can't believe that worked out right but it did and also there's just enough room there's 10 and a half inches this way to where I can get a second battery which is that's, that's something that I want to do um, the most I pulled off of it so far was 66 amps and that's for my tankless water heater 
So I'm coming nowhere near, you know, pushing it to where the BMS would kick in and, and protect it. But I still would like to get a second battery because they recommend that you only charge at 30 amps. Uh, so that kind of limits me to just uh, charging at 30 amps where here pretty soon I'm going to have 3,000 watts worth of uh, panels. And I would like to go ahead and get, you know, 60 amps going, you know. And if I put in a second battery, that doubles it. So I can charge at 60 amps. And I made these little... Um, Sorry for it being so dark, man, but not much I can do about it. You probably can't even see that. Anyways, I made a couple of uh, little um, angle um, iron pieces, L brackets, to put on here. Because it has the standard, it has the standard, you know, um, screw that screws directly down in. And you can't get very much on there. So, but when I get my second battery... I'm going to do away with that and just use that normal screw and uh, I'm going to use uh, bus bars. So, and the bus bars will be probably laid right about here will be the either the positive or the negative bus bar and over here on this second battery I'll, I'll lay either the positive or negative whichever way I go, whichever way I go uh, bus bar on this one and then they'll be uh, velcroed down. And uh, that'll that'll make it uh, a lot more efficient than just using than ju just jumping it with uh, jump wires, jump cables. Um, but yeah, uh, very good. I mean, there's nothing bad to say. Um, but I will tell you what happened though. Now that I've told you about the battery, when I first got it. Um, you know, I used to work for a company that worked for FPNL, Florida Power and Light. So, you know, getting a little spark here and there doesn't bother me at all. I, I know, you know, it's going to do it. I know it's not going to be so bad. I know that I'm not going to get shocked. I know I'm not going to get burnt. It just happens. So sometimes you just let it happen, you know, because it's a pain in the rear to try to avoid it. So I've always hooked up my batteries to my... Um, inverter without using a uh, you know just hooking right to it and you get a little spark and no big deal right well it's never been a big deal and it, and it wasn't any different spark than any other but these new batteries uh, I'm not complaining about this this is a good thing these new batteries um, the BMS will protect it and uh, that's what it did it went directly into protect mode when I hooked it to my uh, inverter because it was just drawing too much, the capacitors in the inverter draw drew like over 200 amps. So the BMS threw it into protect mode. Well, I didn't know what to do. I mean, how do you get it back out of protect mode? I don't see how you get it back out of protect mode. How do you do it, you know? All new to me. So I went on the forums and I'm like, man, I don't know what's going on with these batteries. Did I mess up? You know, there's no way of getting it back to life again now that it's in protect mode well it turns out that all I had to do was either put a draw on it or put a charge on it and but I would figure that if it if it um, if it went into protect mode because the last thing that you did was draw on it real hard probably drawing on it won't take it out of protect mode you probably have to put it on charge and the opposite if, if charging if overcharging through it in protect mode probably the next time you want to wake it up and get the BMS working again you would have to put a draw on it. But anyways, I so that's what I did. I put a charge on it and got it working. Well, I bought this charger too, this battery charger from Signature Solar. And uh, I got it and uh, I thought that, you know, with any battery charger, you plug it in the wall first, then you hook it to the battery because I was going to try to use it to wake this battery up. Well, it turns out that these battery chargers don't work that way. There's not even an on and off switch on these chargers. They just come, you just plug them in the wall, and, you know, that's how you, that's how you um, power them up. Well, with these, um, you have to hook them to the battery first. Then you plug it into the wall. 
because it wants to do a little diagnostic check to see what's going on before it powers up, which is another good thing. No complaint. I have no complaint. It's a good thing. It's, that's great. That's a really good idea. Well, it turns out that's what I had to do, and I finally figured it out. <laughs> but I was on forums, you know, and uh, asking everybody what was going on. It was, it was kind of embarrassing. But I got this charger. I'll show it to you. Uh, oh, things are so hard to see in here. That's the charger. I, uh, I hooked it to my 8020 up here. So it's out of the way. You know, it's good and secure. So that worked out really good. And I also put a on-off switch on it. Because I didn't want to deal with uh, plugging it in every time. But, uh, the, uh, you probably can't even see it. Oh, well. But I have it uh, hooked to the battery, and it's hooked to the battery all the time. And, uh, whenever I need to charge, I just, uh, crank up the, uh, you know, if I don't have enough, uh, solar to get the job done, I crank up my, uh, generator, and that will power up that, uh, charger, and then charge the battery. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a good system. I like it. It's all ready and uh, set to go at, at any time. If I ever have a problem with uh, solar, I just use that charger. Um, but yeah, so far it's been good. I don't expect it to turn any other way. And I'm going to get a second one for 200 amp hours. So I'll have uh, 10,000, a little over 10,000 uh, watt hours. Which is what I used to have with my Chevy Volt batteries. That's a whole nother story. What are we at? 12 minutes? Yeah, I'll make it quick. So I started out with Chevy Volt batteries. I got them off of eBay. Chevy used to make this car called a Volt. I think they still do. But this came from a 2014 Chevy Volt. Maybe a 2015. And these batteries were lithium cobalt and they have their pluses and their minuses. Um, they're really, really uh, energy dense, but you have to be super careful about overcharging them because they will swell and they will turn into flamethrowers and just annihilate, in my case, everything that I own. So there was always that scare, you know? And then one time I just, you know, I brought it up a little bit higher, you know, because I started running this air conditioner and uh, next thing I know, they're swelling like crazy. And then I'm terrified that in my sleep, this thing's just going to, you know, one of the pouches could swell to the point that it either makes connection and, and uh, um, makes a fault that way or just bursts open. And then that way it can make a fault. Then you have thermal, thermal runaway where one pouch will ignite another pouch. You got 16 pouches that are total, I mean, flame throwers, man. I ran a, uh, the reason I'm, I say that is because I ran a uh, claw hammer into one just to see what would happen. And it was an instant, not quite an explosion, but close. But it was an instant flamethrower, probably through the flame, probably uh, at least three feet. And it was a big flame too, not just like a little pinhole flame. And this went on for a good... Um, probably 30 seconds of it throwing a two foot long flame um, before it went out and that was just one pouch and there were 16 pouches to each battery and I had four of them um, so I had 200 amp hours of those and uh, yeah super dangerous I wouldn't recommend it I mean you're playing with your life with that kind of battery and these are lithium um, iron phosphate, which is way, way, way more uh, safe. You might get a little white mist. You might get a little white smoke, uh, a little heat, but it's not going to turn into a flamethrower. And uh, lithium titanate is even safer than this. But lithium titanate doesn't last. You know, you, it's not energy dense at all but it can dump out massive amounts of, of amps. 
it would be great if you were making a uh, electric bike that was a drag bike for the quarter mile. Lithium titanate would be great for that. That's about it though. By the time you got to the quarter mile, got to the end, to the finish line, they would probably be dead and have to be recharged. But anyways, yep, that's the battery. Um, that's my stories, <laughs> my mishaps. And uh, yeah, I suggest that, yes, you, you should buy this battery. I will tell you this, though, if you're still here, I hope you're still here, but when all was said and done uh, with shipping and all that from Texas to Florida, this was $2,000 for one. But so it's going to be $4,000. For me to have two of these but it is worth it because i'm 56 years old and i'm never going to have to deal with a battery again these will last me the rest of my life so i recommend it pretty much everything that i bought i recommend but there have been a few things i should i should do that too i should warn you guys about other things well the lithium cobalt batteries i warn you against that don't do it they're cheap they're on ebay they come out of the out of the chevy car but yeah way way too dangerous all right thanks for watching my longest video ever i must have really rambled on if you're still here i appreciate it have a good one uh next video is going to be about the trailer it's a 12 foot trailer that i put another thousand watts of uh, solar panels on and I'm going to step up to a 24-foot tra trailer and have 2,000 watts on it. But I'll show you my little trailer um, next video. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.